Hello friends of Daniel Hayford and all of you who are watching and listening to me at this very moment in the history of humanity. It has been established by Sir Kakra Fridri Ajman, an experienced leader, banker, mentor and counsellor that life is good when you are happy but much better when others are very happy because of you. My dear friends, do well to listen to me with rapt attention. As we speak, many people are filled with a great deal of joy and happiness and are rejoicing greatly because they have had the opportunity to participate and enjoy various sessions of the Prestige Wellbeing Conference or PWC for short. The conference has put many people and it is still in the business of putting many more people at a highly competitive advantage when it comes to one, admission for postgraduate programs at top universities in Africa and abroad, two, application and competition for powerful scholarships, especially the foreign based scholarships, three, obtaining or securing great job, work, or employment offers with non-governmental organizations or NGOs. Four, creating and establishing and sustaining business enterprises, and so on and so forth. Some of these people participate in the prestige well-being conference on their own university campuses. Others travel from their campuses to join other students and alumni of various universities on different campuses. There are also many participants who are not students. They are workers or those searching for job, employment, or work. Early and established entrepreneurs also participate in the conference. The conference is also organized for associations, clubs, unions, as well as children, youth, and adults in faith-based organizations. The participants of the Prestige Wellbeing Conference include primary, secondary, and tertiary level students, leaders, managers, counselors, employers, employees, as well as parents, mentors, mentees, teachers, artisans, and so on and so forth. Indeed, some students travel all the way from the KNUST, that is Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, to attend the Prestige Wellbeing Conference at Amstead, Mampo Ashanti Campus. For those of you who do not know, the acronym Amstead stands for Akenten Apia Menkan University of Skills Training and Entrepreneurial Development. Amstead is a powerful university with campuses located in the city of Kumasi and Mampo Ashanti, great. Ladies and gentlemen, some people join and enjoy sessions of the Prestige Wellbeing Conference at their workplaces and in their local communities, districts, municipalities, region, and so on and so forth. Indeed, Many more people participate in the conference by means of online sessions organized through the Google Meet, Zoom, YouTube, and TikTok live platforms. Great! You can also watch some of the previous sessions through the YouTube channel by name DH Media GH. 
subscribe and become a beneficiary of the proceedings. Indeed, there are countless number of people who would like to become part of the beneficiaries of the conference and they would like to know from me in particular what the Prestige Wellbeing Conference is all about. You too will definitely be glad and rejoice a great deal should you choose to decide to choose to listen patiently and carefully to this presentation to the end. You sure will be glad you did. The reason is that this presentation is meant to get you and many others informed about what the Prestige Wellbeing Conference is all about. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the Prestige Wellbeing Conference setting the best standards ever. At the Prestige Wellbeing Conference, we give the participants local and exotic treatment. Hosua, Sandezua, Akwaaba, Amaraba, Wezolo, Ya Tumatuma, Laya Kene, Kenken, Karibu. You are warmly welcome to wear to the Prestige Wellbeing Conference, setting the best standards ever. Great gratitude. Enjoy. Cho Oboi. Yay. Prestige Wellbeing Conference, your first strategic God's Family Storyline Management Conference. Prestige Wellbeing Conference, your first strategic family storyline management conference. Prestige Wellbeing Conference, your first strategic educational conference. Prestige Wellbeing Conference, your first strategic business empire burden conference. Prestige Wellbeing Conference, your first strategic scientific conference. And Prestige Wellbeing Conference, your first strategic nation burden conference. What is the nature, essence, vision, and mission of the Prestige Wellbeing Conference? The nature, essence, vision, and the mission of the Prestige Wellbeing Conference. One, the Prestige Wellbeing Conference can be didactic in nature. The Prestige Wellbeing Conference can be didactic in nature. Indeed, the conference is aimed at helping you and your loved ones to learn something, especially a moral lesson. Indeed, the conference is aimed at helping you and your loved ones to learn something, especially a moral lesson. It is aimed at telling many people certain critical things rather than waiting for them to find out for themselves. It is aimed at telling many people certain critical things rather than waiting for them to find out for themselves. The truth, the reality is that there are many critical things that if we should decide to wait for people to figure out by themselves or to realize by themselves they may not do so throughout their lives. They will live and die 
having wrong impressions about so many things. Many people have lived, many people have died, and what they did was to live according to myth, things that are not read, that are not true, but they lived and, and, and did everything in accordance with things that were myth. We don't want to wait for such things to happen to many more people. So the conference is aimed at telling many people certain critical things rather than waiting for them to find out for themselves. And that is one way, or by, in one way, that is what we mean by the prestige well-being conference being didactic in nature. It is aimed at jogging the memory of many others about certain critical things instead of waiting for them to recall those things by themselves. Yes, to some people, the Prestige Wellbeing Conference serves as simple reminders. And that is why we have indicated or we indicate that the conference is aimed at jogging the memory of many others about certain critical things instead of waiting for them to record those things by themselves. Remember, we are each other's keeper. Ubuntu, we are because you are and you are because we are. So as part of the duties of being each other's keeper, we remind people. You know, we help people to uh, be reminded of the simple, basic things that they may forget because of their busy shadow. And so, remember, the conference is aimed at jogging the memory of many others about certain critical things instead of waiting for them to record those things by themselves. Did you know? Misinformation is the order of the day. Misinformation is the order of the day. Did you hear of the recent scandalous breast sucking and the breast cancer fail? Did you hear of the recent scandalous breast sucking and the breast cancer fail? Ladies and gentlemen, it is true that breastfeeding has great benefit for both the mother and child. We know through various appropriate scientific publications that when babies are granted the opportunity to enjoy the ongoing exclusive breastfeeding for six months campaign, they get the privilege to enjoy a considerably reduced risk of mortality or death from communicable or infectious diseases, hospitalization due to diarrhea, as well as fewer respiratory and ear infections. We have also been informed time and again through appropriate scientific studies that children and adults who were breastfed in their early days enjoy a privilege of reduced risk of obesity and type 2 diabetes. What about mothers, ladies and gentlemen? What about mothers who breastfeed their babies? Experts of the field of biology as well as medical sciences, including those of the field of public health, say that mothers who breastfeed their babies secure for themselves the privilege to enjoy a significantly reduced long-term risk of diabetes, heart and blood vessel related diseases called cardiovascular diseases, as well as ovarian cancer and the famous breast cancer. The experts under consideration have also reported that the longer the duration of breastfeeding, 
the greater the reduction in the risk of the various diseases under consideration. Some authorities have reported that breastfeeding reduces the risk of breast cancer, for example, by approximately 4.3% for every 12 months of breastfeeding, in addition to the approximately 7.0% decrease in risk observed for each birth. Wow! Ladies and gentlemen, wow! But that is not all. Ladies and gentlemen, breastfeeding has been demonstrated through the diligence of biomedical scientists to primarily reduce the risk of what biomedical scientists refer to as the triple negative breast cancer menace by approximately 20 percent as well as the careers of BRCA1 mutations by approximately 22% to approximately 50%. I am glad that you are paying attention to me right now. Ladies and gentlemen, the kind of information which the good people of the scientific arena expect and require you to circulate and to pay attention to is that it is the breastfeeding of babies which reduce to significant extent the risk of cancer and the various other diseases. Now listen to me. It is not sucking of a breast by a man, a boy, a girl or a woman which reduces the risk of cancer and other diseases. I repeat, it is breastfeeding of babies which reportedly reduce the risk of cancer and some other diseases to a significant extent. It is not sucking of your breasts or that of your sister by a man friend, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, or a woman friend which reduces the risk of the cancers and other diseases under consideration. Dear friends of Daniel Hayford, dear friends of Daniel Hayford, the good news is that once a mother, according to expert, decides to choose to breastfeed her baby for up to approximately two years, she will also get the rewarding privilege of enjoying some significant protection from the breast cancer menace. The good news is that once a mother decides to choose to breastfeed her baby for up to approximately two years, she will also get the rewarding privilege of enjoying some significant protection from the breast cancer menace. Furthermore, it has been reported that the hormones which are released during each instance of breastfeeding are different in nature and that and that it is that it is that situation which truly accounts for the protection under consideration i repeat furthermore it has been reported that the hormones which are released during each instance of breastfeeding are different in nature and that it is that situation which truly accounts for the protection under consideration. Great gratitude. Great gratitude. Enjoy. To obey. Yay. What have you heard about fasting and Horses.
What have you heard about fasting and horses? What do you think is the connection, link, relationship, correlation, or association between fasting and stomach, gastric, or peptic ulcers? So, what have you heard about fasting and ulceration? Do people say that fasting will cause you to develop and suffer stomach ulcer? Ladies and gentlemen, right from antiquity to date, a considerable proportion of the world's human population practices fasting. They do that for either one of two purposes or for both purposes. One of the purposes is termed religious purposes. Christians and Muslims, for example, do fast at certain times of each year as individuals and in groups. Another purpose of fasting is to adopt a healthier lifestyle, such as intermittent fasting. Did you know during fasting, the person or the people involved undergo considerable metabolic changes we tend to alter their internal environment to a considerable extent. Ladies and gentlemen, does the alteration of the internal environment of the people who fast include development of stomach ulcer? Is it possible that there are some people who do not fast at all because they are afraid that fasting will cause them to develop and suffer stomach ulcer or ulcers? Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think is meant by ulcer or ulcers? What are the causes of ulcers according to the National Institute of Health or NIH for short? Ladies and gentlemen, according to a publication of the National Institute of Health in the year 2022, stomach ulcers are also referred to as gastric ulcers and that they are sores which develop on the lining of the stomach of the victim. The authorities of the National Institute of Health have also indicated that someone can also get ulcers in parts of the intestine just beyond the stomach. They say that such ulcers are known as duodenal ulcers. In other ways, we have stomach ulcers and we have duodenal ulcers. They are at times referred to as peptic ulcers and that they cause the, the same symptoms. We are also told that the ulcers under consideration are treated the same way. Did you know the commonest symptom of a stomach ulcer is a burning or gnawing pain sensed by the victim in the center of the tummy or the abdomen. The pain can truly be painful. Please, have I suffered from an ulcer? No, please. But they say that it can be very painful. Some of my friends can testify to the that. They are very beautiful and you sure will love to meet some of them and uh, know something more about ulcers by their experience one day soon. Note, ladies and gentlemen, take note of the fact that stomach ulcers are not always painful. Furthermore, some of the victims of stomach ulcers may experience indigestion, heartburn, and acid reflux, among other symptoms. Ladies and gentlemen, stomach ulcers happen when there is damage to the layer that protects the stomach lining from the acids in your stomach.
So what causes stomach ulcers? The NIH has indicated that one predominant cause of stomach ulcers is an infection with Helicobacter pylori, or you can simply see H. pylori. For those of you who are not scientists or biologists, to be precise, note that H. pylori is a bacterium, and therefore you can call it a germ, a pathogen, or a causative agent. The second cause of ulcers, according to the NIH, is taking anti-inflammatory medicines or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. For those of you who are not medical doctors, pharmacists, or other health professionals, take note of the fact that non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are medicines which are extensively used to relieve pain reduce inflammation and bring down a high body temperature. Examples of such drugs are ibuprofen or aspirin. They particularly cause ulcers when they are taken for a long time or at high doses. Ladies and gentlemen, many people are comfortably taking and perhaps enjoying heavy doses of these drugs without knowing that they could suffer ulceration one day soon. Did you know once upon a time it was thought that stress or certain foods might cause stomach ulcers, but there is little evidence to suggest that this is the case. Yes, those of you who think that certain foods might cause stomach ulcers, this is truly for your information. There is little evidence to suggest that certain foods might cause stomach ulcers. Yes, there is little evidence to suggest that certain foods might cause stomach ulcers. Ladies and gentlemen, somewhere in the year 1989, when I was 11 years old and in primary four, two experts by cell name Johnston and Wemsley conducted some research work on the effect of fasting on 24-hour gastric secretion of parents of patients with duodenal ulcers resistant to ranitidine. The effect of fasting on 24-hour gastric secretion of patients with duodenal ulcers resistant to ranitidine. What did these two scientists do during this research, ladies and gentlemen, they compared the effect of fasting and feeding on the anti-secretory actions of ranitidine in 19 patients whose duodenal ulcers remain unhealed or relapse in spite of treatment with the drug. For what did the two scientists establish through that research work? Ladies and gentlemen, they established the fact that prolonged fasting can improve the control of gastric secretion and may allow resistant ulcers to heal. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, wow. And in what way does this research finding compare with what you know or what you have heard and therefore think about fasting and ulceration or ulcers? So,
you see ladies and gentlemen you are most probably learning something new right now are you not indeed the prestige well-being conference is truly didactic in nature do not hesitate to join the next session you will discover for yourselves so many important truths or things which when you are left alone you may not know or discover throughout your life and do not forget to share this information to many more people anyway someone will say that the reference that i have indicated is old and obsolete is that what you are thinking if so just hold on as of today september 24 2024 i can afford to say that i have been and remain the teacher for almost eight calendar years i have facilitated the learning of university students and many more people through the university of education winiba mampon ashanti satellite campus from the calendar year 2017 to the year 2020 and through the akenten apia minka university of skills training and entrepreneurial development from that time to date i have also facilitated the learning of many students and non students through my community service through the prestige wellbeing conference from the calendar year 2015 to date i would like to inform you that i am aware that there have been some more publications and i have actually gone through them in the calendar year 2023 for example Roy and Liu Takov explored the topic the effect of Ramadan and intermittent fasting on the development of helicobacter pylori induced peptic ulcers they searched the literature to identify a possible relationship between fasting and the development of helicobacter pyrrole induced peptic ulcers ladies and gentlemen what do you think they found through that research work they found out through the research that remodeling of the gastric environment and increases in concentration of h pyrrole were recorded during fasting they found out through the research that remodeling of the gastric environment and increases in concentration of h pyrrole were recorded during fasting be that as it may they also found that fasting does not affect the incidence of peptic ulcers and that those previous research works or studies that saw an increase in the incidence were not significant they also established that there is no relationship between fasting and the risk of developing h pyrrole induced peptic ulcers what do you think their research findings suggest their research findings suggest that individuals with uncomplicated ulcers are not at a risk of developing further ulcers and can participate in fasting or fast provided they take the recommended measures their research findings suggest that individuals with uncomplicated ulcers are not at a risk of developing further ulcers and can participate in fast provided they take 
the recommended measures. Ladies and gentlemen, did you hear that? So what will you do the next time you hear that a session of the Prestige Wellbeing Conference is coming on in your community or on your university or SHS campus? And why would you not choose to become a member and possibly a co-sponsor of our activities? Or why would you not take, why would you not talk to people who could become co-sponsors of the Prestige Wellbeing Conference to come on board the PWC's airplane? Remember, you can be a co-sponsor and or a bringer of a co-sponsor. Great. Gratitude. Anyway, let me say a few more things about fasting on horses. Ladies and gentlemen, in the year after the death, resurrection and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ, 2019, one Matthew, not the tax collector, this one is called Matthew C. L. Phillips, investigated the topic fasting as a therapy in neurological disease. Fasting as a therapy in neurological disease. Look for the article after this presentation and enjoy it for yourself. You will appreciate the fact that fasting is deeply entrenched in evolution. You will be able to appreciate the fact that fasting induces an altered metabolic state that optimizes neuron bioenergetics, plasticity, and resilience in a way that may counteract a broad array of neurological disorders. Wow! Fasting induces an altered metabolic state that optimizes neuron bioenergetics, plasticity, and resilience in a way that may counteract a broad array of neurological disorders. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, wow. Cho -boy. Did you know it is not only human beings who fast? Animals also fast. Or if you are a biological scientist, you would like me to say that other animals too fast. Yes, animals, including human beings, do fast. So in case you admit to the fact that you are not a plant, fungus, protist, bacterium, or a member of the archaea, then you belong to the kingdom animalia and your kindreds fast. So you too, you can choose to decide to fast intermittently. Only that you have to learn and fast the right way. Ladies and gentlemen, Phillips indicated that in the case of both human beings and other animals, fasting prevents and treats the metabolic syndrome, a major risk factor for many neurological diseases. In the case of animals, he wrote that there is the likelihood that fasting prevents the formation of tumors and that it possibly treats established tumors and improves tumor responses to chemotherapy. Can you imagine that? And how many of you, when you are left alone, will conduct your own literature search and know more about fasting beyond the rumor? Here say, idle talk, tattle tattle, skittle bat, the tail, or something like that. Did you know, ladies and gentlemen, did you know Phillips also established the fact that in the case of human ulcers, including those, in the case of human can cancers, including those cancers which are known to involve the brain itself, 
fasting goes right on to ameliorate chemotherapy related adverse effects and may protect normal cells from chemotherapy ladies and gentlemen did you know phillips also established the fact that in the case of cancers including those cancers which are known to involve the brain itself fasting goes right on to ameliorate chemotherapy related adverse effects and may protect normal cells from chemotherapy furthermore the author established the following remarkable points which you do not wish to forget one fasting improves cognition two it stores age-related cognitive decline it stores age-related cognitive decline three it usually slows neurodegeneration four it reduces brain damage and enhances functional recovery after stroke and five it mitigates the pathological and clinical features of epilepsy and multiple sclerosis in animal models wow ladies and gentlemen wow so you can choose to fast only that you must choose to fast the right way great gratitude and joy yay what did they say that the intelligent quotient or iq has to do with human race did they say that the intelligent quotient or iq vary with human race is the black the least intelligent and the white the most intelligent ladies and gentlemen many people have lived and died with the mythology that the intelligent quotient or iq for short differ greatly between the human race there are people who are alive today who do not know that the story that black have the lowest iq or intelligent quotient brown people have intermediate level iq and the whites have the highest iq is a myth or a tale or a saga you can call it the iq saga many people do not know that it is not true that iq or intelligent quotient or intelligence um vary considerably among people just because they have black skin brown skin or white skin look level of intelligence does not vary with the color of their eyes hair, etc ladies and gentlemen take note of the fact that race is just a mere social construct look africans could just get up today and say that because they are the very darkest of all human race they are the best human beings likewise the asians europeans and the americans can just get up any day and say that because of their body color the size of their eyes eye color or whatever they are the best human beings but note that no matter how and why unscrupulous or crooked crooked people crooked people crooked people try to use scientific methods to back up such claims the reality and for that matter the truth will remain that unscientific ideologies will remain unscientific did you know discussions debates arguments of a supposed relationship link connection correlation or association between the socially constructed human race 
and intelligence levels of human beings in addition to purported genetic differences in intelligence levels along racial lines have gone on for centuries such discourses have reportedly showed up in popular science platforms as well as in academic research right from the time when the contemporary idea notion concept in perception thought or impression of race was first announced or introduced into the system ladies and gentlemen tremendous amount of research works have been done on the subject or the topic over the years so far there is no single scientific evidence that the average intelligent quotient or iq scores of different human population groups can be attributed by anybody black or brown or white to genetic variations or differences between those human population groups studied so far there is no single scientific evidence that the average intelligent quotient or iq scores of different human population groups can be attributed by anybody black black brown or white to genetic variations or differences between those human population groups studied Various authorities have rather been able to establish the fact that so far, growing evidence points to the fact that it is environmental factors instead of genetic ones which do explain the racial intelligent quotient or IQ gap observed around the globe. Did you know somewhere in the year 1996 a task force a task force investigation on intelligence which was found funded or financed by the american psychological association concluded that there were considerable differences in iq across races nevertheless a systematic analysis which was conducted by william dickens and james flynn 10 years later on, and for that matter, in the year 2006, demonstrated the IQ or intelligent quotient gap between black Americans and white Americans to have closed greatly or significantly or dramatically during the period between 1972 and 2002. That is about three decades or 30 years. What is the implication of this observation? The findings of William Dickens and James Flynn suggest that the constancy of the black-white IQ gap is a myth. It is not real. It is not natural. It is a man-made ideology, not genetics. Ladies and gentlemen, the issue of assessing and establishing the causes underlying racial variation in IQ or intelligent quotients and other things has been explored to a large extent as a definitive question of nature versus nature. You can explore the research works of one Alan S. Kaufman and Nathan Brody, for example, for some more information on the subject. Various scientists have indicated that there are inadequate, insufficient, or unsatisfactory data for anyone to fall on to draw a conclusion that the black-white gap in intelligent quotient or IQ and some other things is due to genetic factors, influences, effects, or impact. Various researchers such as one day Keynes and his co-worker by name Flynn contended more possibly that their own research findings disprove or refute the likelihood, probability, or possibility of a genetic source, origin, or basis of the gap which people have observed between whites and blacks. They concluded that the environment has been responsible 
for observed differences, not genetics, as many people have been made to believe through wrong indoctrination, brainwashing, propaganda, or mind and heart programming. You must do well to begin to deprogram yourself from such falsehood now and help many people, especially the youth and younger generation, to do same. Did you know a review scientific research article which was published in the year 2012 through the admirable efforts of principal or leading scholars on the subject of human intelligence drew a comparable or similar conclusion after going over or reading or reviewing or studying the prior research literature that group differences in intelligent quotient or IQ are best understood as environmental in source, origin, or basis. Furthermore, not long ago, one geneticist and neuroscientist called Kevin Michel established on the foundation or basis of fund fundamental or basic or simple but key principles of the field of population genetics that systematic genetic differences in intelligence between large ancient populations are inherently and deeply implausible. Ladies and gentlemen, the IQ test which you see online and in the social media started with one Alfred Bynet, who lived from the year 1859 to 1911. Bynet started his research work on the measurement of intelligence of human beings without realizing the kind of Pandora's box which his research work and findings were going to unlock. Through his research work, what is called the Binet scale was created. Later on, the Binet scale was revised or modified or transformed by one German called Louis William Stern and retitled or renamed the Intelligent Quotient or IQ for short. From that time forward, human beings were assigned a quantitative and for that matter, an objective technique, method or procedure of gauging intelligence. Did you know various authorities have indicated that Binet's original intention for his test was for it to be used as a rough guide for recognizing madly retarded and learning disabled kids with the expectation of managing these kids' unique training to improve or enhance their mental capability. Unfortunately, Goldard, Thurman, Yerkes, and so many other scientists saw this novel test as a way of classifying human beings into inferior and superior individuals. And that those adjudged inferior individuals needed to be controlled, regulated, delimited, and most importantly disallowed, prevented, banned, or forbidden from reproducing. Can you imagine that? And did you know many of the likes of Goldard, Thurman, and Yerkes went right on to use their data to formulate, create, or develop a, hered a hereditary theory of intelligent quotient or IQ depended or IQ, which depended basically, primarily, or principally on what is called within and between group heredity. What does that mean? It means that they would try and identify or detect or find an estimate of her heritability within a single human population and then go right on to conclude that that similarity or, or that similarity or likeness or comparison within that group also elucidates, explains, interprets, or clarifies the common variations or differences between groups. Ladies and gentlemen, experts say that 
it was these unfortunate assumptions which became a tradition and created or caused one of the worst issues or problems which humanity is still encountering. That is, human beings now got quantitative data to support racism, discrimination, and therefore the slave trade, among other things. And what do you think happened afterwards? The demons unleashed from the box and scattered even to the extent of reaching the religious heart and minds. Yes, the demons on, of racism unleashed from the box, the Pandora's box, and scattered even to the extent of reaching the religious heart and minds. And blacks were described both by the religious by the religious and atheists as not being human beings enough. Yes, blacks were described by both the religious and atheists as not being human beings or humans enough. Can you imagine that? Anyway, the reality is that I kill is not genetic in nature or does not have genetic backing and does not vary with complexion, mere complexion. Great gratitude and joy to we. Yay. Have you heard of the shocking shortage of men tail? Have you heard of the shocking shortage of men tail? Till not long ago, I came across a certain information circulating on WhatsApp platforms. The title of the article is Breaking News, Shocking Shortage of Men Hit the World. According to the article, the UN had published its first quarter demography report for the year 2023 and that there were 7.8 billion human beings on the planet Earth. The author or the authors indicated that the report of the UN indicated that of the 7.8 billion people, women constituted 5.6 billion, whereas men constituted only 2.2 billion. The authors then went right on to advise that women should be careful in showing attitudes to any man because out of the 2.2 billion men, 1 billion are married already, 130 million are in prison, and 70 million are mentally ill. And that means that we have just about 1 billion men available for marriage, and out of the 1 billion, 50% are jobless, 5% are gay, 2% are Catholic priests, and 9% are having erection problems. 2% are fighting wars, and 32% are above 66 years. So ladies, both the married and singles were advised to handle men with respect. And the reason for that is that there is shortage of men all over the world. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you think is the purpose of such a message? Is it a joke? What kind of a joke is that? And will people see it as a joke or a true information or factual? Ladies and gentlemen, did you know, as of November 2022, the record of the UN rather showed that the human population was not 7.8 billion. Instead, it was 8 billion. What else do you seek to know? Wait. Are you sure that there are more females than males in this world? What is the source of your information? Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Look at the caption right here. It says, follow the uh, cursor. It says, global search ratio expected to move 
toward balance by 2050. In other words, as it stands now, there is imbalance in the global sales ratio. Look at the trend from the 1950 to the current and then through 2025 to 2050. Look at the caption here. It says, number of males per 100 females. Did you know somewhere in the year 1950, the number of males per 100 females was 99.3. That means that there were more females in this world than males. But ladies and gentlemen, what, uh, what has the trend been over the years? By the year 1975, the number of males per 100 females was 100.4, meaning that by the year 1975, there were more males than females in the world. By the year 2000, there were still more males, you know, in the world than females. There were 101.1 males per 100 females. And that has continued to today. And it is expected to continue to the next year, 2025, when there will be 100.9 males per 100 females. Nevertheless, it is expected that by the year 2050, there will be equal number of males and females. We do not know what will happen afterwards, but what ha has been the trend around the various parts of the universe or the various countries around the world? Look at the captions here. Males outnumber females globally, but the reverse is true in some countries. In other ways, throughout the world, there are more males than females, even though there are situations or there are some countries where you can find more females than males. So look at the captions here. Number of males per 100 females as of July 2021. Number of males per 100 females. In Canada, as of the year of as of July 2021, there were 99 uh, males per 100 females. The, in the US, 98. Uh, in Poland, 94. Armenia, 82. Portugal, 89. Brazil, 97. Uganda, 98. Kazakh, Kazakh 93. Russia, 87. Uh, Australia, 99, Zimbabwe, 89. Ladies and gentlemen, apart from these countries, let's look at what other countries that we have. In Greenland, as of July 2021, there were 111 males per 100 um, uh, females. Uh, in Nigeria, there were 102 males per 100 females. In India, there were 107 males per 100 females. In Papua New Guinea, there were 107 uh, males per 100 females. Now, in China, there were 104 males per 100 females. In Oman, Oman, there were 157 uh, males, 157 males per 100 females. In Saudi Arabia, 137 males per 100 females. In Qatar, 266. In Bahrain, 164. In Kuwait, 156. In United Arab Emirates, 228 males per 100 females. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at these countries that we can call the Arab or Muslim world. By religion, by religion, 
or, and by tradition, people in Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates can choose to marry up to four females if they are resourceful enough and they can love them equally. Anyway, nobody can love two females equally. Nobody, nobody. Uh, in the Bible, it is said that uh, you can, in those days, they could take on a second uh, wife if they will not reduce the marital rights of the of the first wife. But that one too is not possible. If your wife really needs you this week, your first wife needs you this week, and it is not her turn, okay, you may not be able to attend to her. You may not be able to attend to her. If she is sick and then you are with the other woman, what happens? You will reduce your marital right of getting comfort from their husband. In the same way, in the Quran, it is said that if you can love them or you could, but no human being can really love two women equally. There will be something that will make you love one more than the other. Yes, it is not possible. And so, in actual fact, that command wasn't meant for, or that interaction wasn't meant for people to do. Because it was meant for people to realize that it was not really possible that they could love uh, uh, both wives equally or all the wives equally and that they wouldn't reduce the marital rights of the first. Anyway, let's say that uh, it is something that people should do. Okay, because I, I hear many people talk about uh, polygamy and when they talk about it, they talk about the situation where males are the ones who are supposed to marry more and women are not. Meanwhile, polygamy uh, has two dimensions. Situation where males marry more, okay, or females marry more. So we have polygyny and polyandry. But people only talk about the male situation. Ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, assume that people in this part of the world could marry uh, uh, up to four wives. Now, Look at the number of males in Saudi Arabia in relation to females. 137 is the estimate. 220, 266 at Qatar. You know, 164 Bahrain, Kuwait, 156 United Arab Emirates, 228. Would you say that the females there, if they are resourceful, they should marry two or more men? Is that what you would say? Ladies and gentlemen, let's look at things carefully. Because some of the information which are circulated, which are propagated by the social media, you know, uh, suggests that there are more females in the world than males, which is not true. There are rather more males in this world than females. And two, if, then, if numbers are the reason why some people should compromise, if numbers are the reason why some people should be humiliated, disgraced, or be looked down upon, then in these countries, what should the women over there do? Because the men are more, and the women are supposed to be scarce, and they are supposed to, to be the ones to marry more, because there's polygyny and there's polyandry. Ladies and gentlemen, have you realized that the prestige well-being conference is didactic in nature? Many people have lived in recent times thinking that there are more females than males, when in actual fact, the, when you put the whole of the human population together, you get more males than females. A recently released population projections from the United Nations indicated that the global sex ratio is expected to even out by 2050 or 2050. So, what has been the trend so far? Globally, the number of males has exceeded the number of females since the mid 1960s. As of the year 2021, there were about 44 million more males than females in the global population. As of the year 2021, there were about 44 million more males than females in the global population. 
women and girls form 49.7% of the world's human population. In other words, men and boys constitute 50.3% of the global human population. Note that there are two very unfortunate happenings in most societies around the globe. To begin with, women and girls are often ignored in discussions on demographics. Women and girls are often ignored in discussions on demographics. And on top of that, the rights of women and girls are often violated in population policies. The rights of women and girls are often violated in human pop population policies. The rights of women and girls are often violated in population policies. Arise, O oh youth of today. Join hands with us and let us work hard, smart and consistently to ensure that there is a paradigm shift. Arise, O oh youth of today, and let the many generations after you arise. And let us work hard, smart and consistently to ensure that no human being is dehumanized degraded, shamed, demeaned, humiliated, or disgraced just because one, he is a man or she is a woman. Two, he or she is black, colored, white, or brown. Three, he or she is currently civilized or uncivilized. Four, he or she is an atheist, religious, or a person of faith. Great gratitude to Obi. Yay! Indeed, PWC intends to empower you to take critical actions required to overcome important problems which are of local national and international concerns. Yes, there are problems which are of local, national and international concerns and PWC intends to empower you to take critical actions required to overcome such important problems. You must be willing to be empowered. Are you willing to come on board the PWC's airplane to be empowered? Are you willing to come on board the PWC's airplane to be empowered? Uh, you must be empowered to empower many others. You must be empowered to empower many others. Indeed, at the PWC, you sure will be empowered to empower many others. Great gratitude and joy to obey. Yay! The conference is meant to convey the university to the very doorsteps of people across Africa and beyond. The conference is meant to convey the university to the very doorsteps of people across Africa and beyond. Ladies and gentlemen, one day in the year 2016, the conference was organized in Accra, in the Achimota district. It was facilitated by the Assemblies of God Women Ministry. 32 churches were expected. Ladies and gentlemen, the conference was a, a very grand one. It was on the chronic kidney and liver diseases. Yes, chronic kidney diseases, chronic liver diseases. Ladies and gentlemen, because of time at that time, we could not explore the chronic liver disease, but we explored 
the chronic kidney diseases at length. It was a one-day conference. After the conference, and let me even tell you this, in the course of the conference, there was a woman who asked very powerful, very good questions. The way she communicated really portrayed or showed, demonstrated that this woman had grasped the concepts, the lessons, and the principles of the day. Yes, it showed that the woman had take homes, take aways. It was powerful. Now, after the conference, she walked up to me and then she indicated that, look, you have made me enjoy university life at least once in my life. Then I asked her how and why. She indicated that she schooled only up to the elementary stage, but it does happen that her children are of the schooling type. She watches movies with them, and some of the movies showcase university classrooms. So she knows how university lectures are facilitated. And by the program of that day, I made her feel that she was in the university. She has enjoyed university life. Ladies and gentlemen, at that time, I had not told anybody that the conference is meant to convey the university to the very doorsteps of people across Africa and beyond. But by that woman's testimony, I got to know that the purpose was, was powerful and the purpose, okay, the fulfillment of the purpose you know, had begun. We must convey the university to the very doorsteps of people across Africa and beyond. It is not everybody who can pay the huge university fees. It's not everybody who can have the privilege of going to the university in this period of our lifetime. And even from yesterday, you know, from the past, many people didn't get the opportunity to enjoy the university life. But they must not be denied of what they need to know. Yes, the, 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 we have a lot of information in, uh, on the university campuses, the libraries, the online and the physical libraries, the, the scholars, the faculty members that you see, they are, they are so much rich in knowledge. We must find a way of getting the information to many people who won't have the privilege of, of, of attending university, who won't have the privilege of speaking the official languages that are spoken across Africa. So we must convey the university to the very doorsteps of people across Africa and beyond. Yes, we must. We will convey the university to the very doorsteps of people across Africa and beyond. Yes, we will. Great gratitude. We praise God. Why? It is because where there is well, there is a way. And that with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. We can do all things through the Christ who strengthens us. Yes, the Christ represents the word of God. We can do all things through the Christ who strengthens us. We can do all legally godly things and godly legally appropriate things. Yes, we can do them. Remember, it is not everything which is legal which is good. Yes, there are some countries with legal legalities which are really not good for humanity. And there are countries with things that are supposed to be godly, but are really not godly in themselves, and they are not even legal, they are not appropriate. But through the prestige, we will achieve things that are appropriate. We can achieve good things, yet things which are of eternal significance. Yes, we can. Yes, we must. Yes, we will. Great. Gratitude. Enjoy. Yay. The vision is to reach out to both the literate and the illiterate. People who can speak official languages of countries and people who cannot. People who are schooled and people who are not schooled. To the schooled, it is going to be simple reminders to the unschooled. Is going to be a way that they too can benefit from schooling and therefore education. 
The vision is to reach out to both the atheists and the religious. Every life matters, everybody matters to us. The conference is intended to help all participants to build a solid portfolio in both the curricular and the extracurricular activities. Yes, for those of you who are students, to those of you who are students, let me say this. The conference is help, has already helped many people to know how to build solid portfolios and people are building. The conference has helped many people to know how to build a career path, how to how to begin entrepreneurial ventures and how to sustain them. The conference you know, has been the reason why many people have gotten the opportunity to know how to do the right things to secure admission at top universities in, here in Africa and beyond. The conference has been the reason many people have gotten to know what to do to be able to secure scholarships and are schooling or some have even finished their education and they are working. Yes, so the conference will help you build solid portfolio. We sh should afford to leave no stone unturned. We must leave no stone unturned. We will leave no stone unturned. Grace, gratitude, and joy. Cho boy. Yay!